Why do we want to study nonlinear systems? Linear systems are much nicer. Unfortunately, many applied problems exhibit nonlinear behavior. In this video, we'll see an example from biology and one from chemistry to illustrate this point. Okay, fair enough. But why don't we just put them on a computer and use some numerical question? Well, that's a good question. And we will discuss the answer at the end of this video, so let us get started. First application from biology, heavily simplified one. Suppose we have a population of zebras and of lions, and that's it. So we take a simplified model. Now, what happens with our population of zebras? Well, if there are no uh, lions present, they're happy, happy and they grow. Dx dt equals k times x1, where k is some parameter. However, as soon as there are also lions present, x2, the chance they meet is roughly proportional to x1 times x2, and if they meet, that could add unfortunate for the zebra, so we had to have a minus k2 times x1 times x2. Now we move on to our lions, dx2 dt. So what happens with our lions? Well, if there are no zebras, well, lions don't eat grass, so they have a problem, and they will go extinct. dx2 dt equals minus k3 3 times x2. However, if there are zebras present, then you get a, a term of the form uh, k4 times x1 times x2. They will start to grow again. So, that's how we can model lion zebra population. And here already we see an example of non-linearities arising, because here we are linear, here we are linear, but here we have some non-linear terms. So what will happen in the end? Will they both grow? Will they get extinct or so? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to analyze that. That's for later. Let's move on to our second example, uh, to chemistry, the law of mass action. Suppose you have some reaction where A, B, and C are some chemicals, where A plus 2B reacts to C. So what happens to the concentrations of our chemicals? Well, let us denote the concentration of A by X1, the concentration of B by X2, and the concentration of C by X3. So what do we know about the rate of change of A? Well, the dx1 dt it is uh, produced by the back reaction, and uh, uh, the more C we have, the more we produce, so we get a plus K minus X3. So how much do we lose? Well, we have an A plus 2B, so we get a reaction as soon as 1A meets 2B. So an A and B and a B have to meet, so that's roughly proportional to the concentration of A times B times B. So that is what's called the law of mass action, and modeled like this, minus K times X1 times X2 squared. Well, similarly for B, only this goes twice as hard of course, because we, every reaction either generates 2B if you go backwards or costs 2B if you go to the right. And uh, C, the, uh, the term is just the opposite as the term for A, because every time we uh, generate C, we lose 1A. So there we have an example of a system of differential equations. Uh, for some very, uh, well, straightforward reaction, which already contains all kinds of non-linearities. So, there we also have an example of a non-linear system. So, in general, we will write our system as follows. dx1 dt is some non-linear function of x1 up to xn and t time, and for the last variable as well, dx1 and dt is also some other function of your dependent variables x1 up to xn and time t. And now an important class for which we will look at, and we make our functions slightly easier. We say, okay, our functions cannot depend on t, so they are not explicitly depending on time. So the right hand sides do not depend on time, just as is the case here and here. So very important large class. And we will look at those autonomous systems. Well, we can just put them on a computer, right? So you start with some configuration, and then you compute all time derivatives by computing your function values, and then you integrate and integrate. So we could do all of this using a computer. 
Well, yes. So, why analysis? Now, first of all, as you can already see, there are a lot of parameters involved here. So uh, we want to know what, what do these parameters do. So we like to have an idea of the qualitative behavior as a function of the parameters to do a parameter study. And third, also important, the size of these parameters can uh, differ, especially in chemistry, orders of magnitude. Like one is 10, 10 and the other is 10 minus 5, something like that. So you can have very different time scales in your problem and your numerics is not going to like that. And first, of course, it's very much fun to study these nonlinear systems. Also a very good reason to continue studying nonlinear systems.